Hey, I'm Kev Kev, Masako, and welcome back to MotoGP 17 and the rider. Career has Patrick McDonald has had an off season to think of who he is going to ride for in his final season as a Grand Prix motorcycle rider. He's achieved all he's wanted to accomplish, and so he's going to try and defend the title for the first time at MotoGP level. Will he be on the Honda or the Yamaha, Ducati, Suzuki? LCR Honda, Monster Yamaha Tech 3, Premac Racing Ducati, the Aprio Racing Team Cristini, the Aspar Team, the Factory KTM Racing Team, or Mark VDS, or stick with Avintia Racing. I think he's going to head to the top and be with the movie star Yamaha MotoGP team alongside his rivals from last season, Valentino Rossi. And Mavic Vinales. And let's see what Patrick McDonald can do on the factory Yamaha bike at the season opener round the LaSalle International Circuit in Qatar. So here we are in Qatar as Patrick McDonald looking to kick off his title defense with a fantastic result here against the hardest of oppositions under the lights in Qatar. But he's on this Yamaha. Probably the best handing bike on the grid. Maybe doesn't have the punch down a straight line that Ducati has, but it's definitely good around the corners. And under braking as well. It's just occasionally in certain conditions doesn't quite work as well with the tyres. So we have to watch out for that. Around the eight places like Jerez. But for the most part, Yamaha is the bike to beat. And you saw the team to beat as well, Rossi and Vinales just cruising the teams at championship. So, good spot for Patrick McDonald to land for this, his final season. An incredible career. Just one season where he has not won the title in his current run. Of course he had his previous season with Elusive. And a season where he was not that good and just getting used to things. At World Championship level. Definitely returned with a vengeance though. In the Wookiees Cup. And then the Moto3 Championship. Got going a bit too late in his rookie year Moto2 but then definitely did get going. In the second year and then as you will last see in his rookie season in MotoGP just race to the title in the end as he's going to cross the line with this is a 52 53 1 not too bad as Kaoham is down in front was that someone else down in front there you go McDonald goes fastest they go on his second lap, all taking a very tight line in the left hander. And even tighter over the right hander. Right over the curb. And you see matching it pace rise though. And then into the right hander, gets it down to second gear. And taking a very wide line into the corner. Definitely pushing on his second that, but that bank up maybe should be good enough to go for anyway. But you're never quite sure. And look at that, was half a second quicker. He's at one with this Yamaha already. I don't think any rider would be on the grid, particularly the defending world champion. Let's go down this bendy back straight. Into the fast right and just have to make sure you hit that first apex or you're just in a world of pain and upset the rhythm. And the rest of the right hand is coming up. And it was almost a second quicker McDonald on this lap. He is pushing like a hell. And you would expect this on the works hand to be way ahead of everyone else. He's qualifying one session. He goes through the final corner, gets hard on the power, races towards the line despite an indifferent 
first sector is cruised into the 52 flat. And that's over a second faster than the spot. I told you his first up was good enough anyway with Volga in third and Jack Miller in fourth. Scott Redding fifth, Ross Bass sixth. His former teammate Alex Rins in seventh, Alvaro Batista eight, Tira about ninth, Hector Barber tenth, Carrie Brim eleventh, and Paul Spargo, Sam Lewis and Bradley Smith on the back row. Unfortunately, a familiar sight has. What can Patrick Miller do in qualifying two? Gonna grab a debut pole. On this Yamaha. So here goes Patrick Dodd for his one effort in qualifying two to grab that pole position. Continue his streak. We're qualifying extremely well in the top five. As he ended here brilliantly with a Vinci, of course, won every race. Okay, leaves that team with 100% record. Hasn't been able to say that. A lot through his career. Not many riders have ever been able to say that with a team. Well, that's a decent first set from it all. Turned in a bit early though. Into the right hand and keep it nice and smooth for the second right. And then into the left and a break very deep. Again, just keeping that speed up through the corner. And into the right hand of McDonald. And smoothly enough, the Yamaha um, very easy to get the power down, changes direction like a dream. And braking is extremely good. Every area is fantastic on this Yamaha. Already for McDonald. Goes into the first right, clips that apex. Oh, very wide in the second right though. But gathers out for the final right hander, just two corners to go. Oh, and so wide in the penultimate corner. This is not going to match what he did in qualifying one. Could he match his first effort though? That wouldn't be too bad. As he heads towards the line, he has made a couple of big mistakes on this qualifying effort. And does a 52-8. Which is a second off his teammate Rossi who grabs Paul ahead of Vinales with Marcus wrapping up the front row. Then you've got Dovi, Crutcher, and Pedroza. That's where McDonald would have been on the second row if he just repeated what he did in qualifying one. We've got Lorenzo Zarka and Ian on the third row. And McDonald leading the fourth row to Petrucci and Elish Espargo. So, what can the reigning champ do on his Yamaha debut? As we look at the grid with. The two Yamos at the top. And you see Dovi leading the fourth second row. You're not very happy about that. It's there. It's blue still in fourth. He returns. So there's looking further down. We've got Baz leading the sit throw. And on the back row, your usual suspects. This is Patrick Medora revving up the engine ready for Lysa Pier. And go out for the first time this season. As he has a fantastic getaway for this six out race. They're going to make a move through Lorenzo and Ian Oni. Around the outside of Eno, around the outside of Crutch though. Up into Sip. Now down the inside of both the Hondas, almost down the inside of Dovi as well. As he tries to join his teammates and making an all Yamaha top three. But up to fourth already, fantastic start from Patrick McDonald. But now he's got to be inch perfect for the whole of this race. It's much tougher defending your title than winning it. As numerous riders can tell you. We've got Pedroza ahead of Marcus for Rivers and Marcus dropping back. Back with Crutcher as well on the other Honda. So he runs a bit wide. Because he's got the medium France hard rears. That's a nice change of direction through the right hand and into the left. Smooth enough on the power, but you can see top three still slightly getting away on this opening up. As he eases it into the right hand, that's nicely done. And into the second right. As this might be McDonald's race, just chasing down this top three is. Pedroza almost a second behind already. 
as Will McDonald drifts wide in that penultimate corner. And into the final corner, locking up the rear slightly. Smooth enough on the power. They might get some slip stream from Dovi down this start finish straight as we go on to the second lap of this race. Finales Rossi, Vizioso and McDonald. And here comes McDonald with the dive on Dovi, not quite working though. No. As Mark is ahead of his teammate Pedroza. And now here comes McDonald down the inside of Dovi as we've got Barbera down, his former teammate from 22nd for the Spaniard. So no doubt he did the fast down to open out 55 4 as here comes Dovi round the outside. Very ambitious from the Ducati man. But he might make that the inside for the right. But the next time McDonald's got him back on the exit. And into the left hand, they're trying to look up that apex McDonald, but runs wide and Dobby again looking down the inside. So they're battling like a hell. So McDonald's teammates, Rossi and Vinales in front. And they're losing ground to them. And then this time McDonald's finally got in front. As you can see, over a second gap now to Rossi and Vinales. So I tries to get a nice smooth exit away through that left-hander. And now he's just got his two teammates to chase. There's an all Yamaha podium. Told you Yamaha were good. That's all once again the back end sliding out slightly. He goes through the left-hander. Pushing like a hell, McDonald. Going to the final corner. Dovi has a look. McDonald gets a smooth enough getaway, but he's going to give in the set stream to the Ducati man. As he go into the third lap of the race. Bernardis 52. McDonald's struggling to slot into a 53. As Rossi takes the lead back from his younger teammate. There's all at least the spar go down from 13th. I doubt that's pole in the KTM. And you can see over a two second gap in front for McDonald to choke close on these remaining four laps of the race. As he's now got a second gap behind to Dovi. And now there's back air to Rossi. But for how much of the hunger? Let's look at Rossi already having a look. Into the left hander. Had to go into the middle part of this third lap, the halfway mark of this race. I have to say, McDonald's looks like he's actually closing. Boy might start falling back, but he is pushing like a hell. Let's go through the left hander. Got to be so careful getting on the power on these MotoGP machines. You can hear McDonald slightly waver trying to get on the power. You can see why when the rear wheel spins up like that. Now you can see just under two seconds behind the top two. Dovi around half a second back behind. It's all McDonald not very good into these last couple of corners of the lap. Can he nail the final corner though? That's very important leading on to. Start finish straight, that's pretty decent. But as you can see, the top two just racing away. Look, Dovi has some slip stream as you go into the second half of the race. 52 6 7 from McDonald. Matching the pace of the top two, but not closing. As Rossi takes back the lead from Vinales. And as you can see, tires around halfway wall in front and rear. Not what McDonald wants to see. But he's very good in the first half, this lap. In the second half, seems like his teammates peg him back. And look at that, he's got over a second gap behind. Second half gap in front. And it's now we're in McDonald time in the part of these races, where he tends to be so good. It's all struggling to get on the power though. It's maybe the tyres are a bit more worn than he would like as well. There's this medium front, 
Hard rear combination worked so well last season. There's a different season now. You can see he's spinning up the tyres everywhere. It gets hard on the gas though. And this height is visibly gaining, just as you say that, runs wide in the right hander. Look at the apex for the next one, that's not too bad. Not the third, he is a few tenths closer than he was in the previous lap. And he's hit those corners much better than on the previous lap as well. He's going to the right and uh, where's he going? Just when he needed to nail a braking point, he goes to Narnia and back. Has he gone to the penultimate lap of the race? No, oh, it does a 52 3, the new fastest lap. And you see well wide in the first corner as he tries to get on the power, but look how worn the tyres are. As he is really closing on his teammates now. Will we have to any tyre there for the final lap? Front tyre is particularly well worn. As he's around a second behind, he's got a 1.7 sec, 7 gap behind to Dovi. So he doesn't have to concentrate on Ducati, he can just concentrate on the top to his teammates. Hopefully they can start battling a bit more as well as he goes wide in the left hander. Got to be so flawless McDonald the chase. The top two at this level now. That's much smoother as he's got half a lap and a half to go. Goes through the right hander and under second behind now. Really is closing, but don't look at that front tire though. Better get any left. Rear tire should hold on fine, it's just the front tire. Might start to understeer on this bike, go wide in through the corners. Might be snatching the brake a bit more as well. Because he's 1.3 seconds behind, he's in no man's land. Go through the corner, it kind of gets that back end out. Now can he nail this final corner like the previous lap? That's much better as he picks the bike up. He goes cross line onto the final lap of this race. But look at that tire wear in the bottom right. As he's pushing like a hell. Join his teammates. And maybe it's just better to take the podium for McDonald. Especially in see the rear. Wanted to break out everywhere whenever he gets on the power. Look at that slide through the right hand. How has he held on? Wouldn't have done that on the KTM or the Ducati. Or the Apri, as we saw last season. Oh, and he's down over the curb. And there goes the potential podium. But can he keep the top five? As look how wide he's going everywhere now. Can't get on the power. Tire wears bit him in the arse here. Because I don't think he can grab back that pony, especially with the bike sliding everywhere. Lucky he's got a 1.5 second gap behind to Pedroza. But for McDonald, the potential. All Yamaha Bojum is out the window. As he's just got a couple of sectors to go. Smooth enough on the power through the first right into the second. Nicely hit that curb. Same for the final right as he's losing time to Marquez. He's really gained on Dovi as the race has gone on. But who's won the battle out of Rossi and Vinales? That's the big question. It's out the final corner goes McDonald. For the top five and it is Vinales. The apprentice beats the master. As great result for McDonald can see where he qualified, but was in his pace that race. You see fastest lap by a couple of tenths ahead of Vinales and Rossi. 
Should have been an all Yamaha podium. Just a silly mistake on the final out with Dovi in third, Marcus fourth, Pedroza sixth, Zarco seventh, Lorenzo eighth, Ino United, Petrucci in tenth, and Redding. Baptista with a great result on the Aspar in twelfth. Rins in thirteenth. Doesn't have to wait that long to score points this season. Fogan fourteenth. Miller grabs the final point just ahead of Lois Baz by six tenths of the second. Sam Lowe's best of the Aprilia's in seventeenth for Caribbean eighteenth. Cal Crutcher in 19th, firm to Cal, with Hector Barber at the back. So the championship looks as you would expect after the first race of the season, has in the constructors, it's Yamaha by 9 points, a Ducati with Honda in 3rd, Suki in 4th for a pre and KTM yet to score, and in the team's rankings, look at that for Yamaha with 3 riders, 32 points ahead of Ducati, with Honda further point back, and then you've got Tet3 and Premac, Level on points in the best of the satellite teams with Suzuki in CF Aspa in 7th and Mark VDS the last of the point scores so far. So a pretty good first race for McDonald on board the Yamaha but can he do even better in Argentina? As here goes McDonald qualifying in Argentina over two laps in qualifying one. Hope you can beat what he did in Qatar that was incredible lap. Second time around. Definitely won't be doing that first time here, but such a good race as well. He showed pace wise, he definitely matches teammates in top class machinery. So they've come back, you know, stronger, leaner, faster. As in it, so the haircut is still stranded on the back straight. Still might be from last season. You never know if they've got the pilots. I thought McDonald, he did make that crucial mistake near the end on very worn tyres. So you probably have to go hard, hard here. I mean, there's no other way around it because that front tyre had nothing left in Qatar. In Argentina, it's tougher on tyre wear. So is the circle of the Americas, Arez. Next few races, the Mons all right in the wet, which we've mostly seen, and the dry. It's a bit like Qatar, so it's only really Magello when Tywa starts to rack down slightly, so I would just keep hard, hard in races for McDonald. Especially as you saw sort of pushing like a hell. You really did wear the tyres out in Qatar. As he does a 36A, that's not a very good banker lap. Might have been the 34s, probably. As we go through the first corner around this fantastic circuit in Argentina. Very good for bike racing, had the touring car racing as well, which is pretty exciting. Can't imagine single seater racing being that fantastic round here but I wouldn't mind seeing IndyCar try and choose this for a venue if they want to expand their horizons out of North America again I know they've had that infamous deal in Brasilia which went south quickly and then the supposed agreement with China as well in the past so they've been burned quite a few times in IndyCar in recent years, but I'm hopeful in the next few years with them looking much better. Hey, they could try and knock on the door and host a race here in Argentina. Might need an Argentine driver though. Or maybe a Uruguay one, Santi Arutia. I don't go much better this lap. Oh, 36 5 from Miller. Maybe McDonald doesn't need a 34. As he goes through the final corner, definitely not achieving that, but that's a 35 7. Quicker so far. And that is good enough to get through to the next stage. He's the only man under the 36 minute barrier. With Folger just over it, making it through by 63 thousands of a second over Alicia Spargo, Scott Ridden. For Chapman ending up in fifth, head of Alba Batista, one of the stars of Qatar with Baz in seven, Alex Rins in eighth, who was very good in the race on that Suzuki. We're back in ninth, we're by a tenth. 
Hey, Brad Madeleine with any usual suspects at the back. So what can Patrick McDonald do in qualifying two? Can he not blow it this time? Let's see, it goes Patrick McDonald reading across the line as he does his one effort in qualifying two. See what he can do and he's already run right in the first corner. Well, he's not going to do very well again, is he? But he didn't start off his best lap in qualifying one that hot either. He's four tenths so than the previous lap, so it's maybe half a second in McDonald at least. But again, 34s will probably be right up there. I'm not sure McDonald can do that. We will see on this lap though. Goes down the back straight. Breaking hard into the right hander. Managed to kiss the apex. Quite a lot. Always oh, French kissing it as he goes through the left hand and then into the right. Down the gears, clipping that apex. That's a rear wheel spinning up like a hell. Oh, I'm wide into the left hander. This is not good out for McDonald's. He goes over that bump. Tries to accelerate in third gear, not working at all though. As he goes into the final couple corners, that penultimate corner, watch out for some moves from riders. And so that in the race, as he crosses over 35 forward improvement. And not bad for Patrick McDonald, the lead in the third, right ahead of Ian, only on his this weekend, Lorenzo on his Ducati, at least it's better. In Qatar, always good to see improvement with Zarka leading the fourth ahead of Petrucci and his teammate Folger. Then on the second row, it's Dovi, Pedroza and Crutchlow. If McDonald got that final set to right, probably would have been on that row. But at the top, it is Mark Marquez by less than a tenth of a second. Head of Rossi and Vindades. So will the Yamahas chase down the Honda man in the race and finally get that all Yamaha podium? As uh, so we've got the grid with Marcus at the top. Dovi once again not happy being in fourth on the grid as there's Blue still leading. The third row ahead of Ian Oni and Lorenzo. You've got Sarka in the fourth. Spargo very happy leading in the fifth row. Just to the sixth and then you saw some bits in the bottom six. So here is Patrick Roy revving up the engine mate for lights up here. And go out for this seven hour race. It's a long one here in Argentina. He's looking to get a good start and slot in in front of Crutch Joe and Pedroza and Dovi. The first couple corners being fourth. Be behind his teammates. They're trying to chase down Marcus. Oh, and there goes Pedroza into the side of McDonald. What was Danny doing? Out from fourth. It's all McDonald runs wide. He's got front tyres hard and rear, so they're not going to be working on this opening lap. Might sure to get the power down in a couple of places. And break for certain hairpins. But he holds on to fourth as Rossi takes the lead from Marcus. Oh, they have clashed round here in the past. And it's like they safely negotiated that overtaken manoeuvre. And now Vinal is trying to make it by Marcus as well. It's Monod holding up Dovi with that right hand. And look at this bike going wide everywhere. Hard to get the power down. Sliding wide in the left hand. I don't know how he's keeping Dovi behind. On the Chikikati. He's going to the final couple of corners, running wide in the penultimate corner. Managed to hit the apex eventually. As well, cross the line in fourth with Rossi leading. Ahead of his teammate Vinales. That's going to be a familiar tell, is it? In the first half of this season. With Marcus chasing down and third, and same for McDonald in fourth on the third Yamaha. Just what you want to see when you've got a team that was dominant last season in the team's championship to get the winning champion, add him to their roster. We can see it almost a second gap, over a second gap already in front, half a second gap behind. So 
It all should be fine headed into the right hander. No dive bombs, no looking behind us. Look at that from Marcus fighting back against Vinales. Oh, he never gives up without a fight, does Mark? Is Petrucci up to sit ahead of Zarco? What is Danilo on? Trying to do the best Ducati this race as well. Had a Dovi who seems to have dropped back. I was in fourth, should I say. Still six tenths behind McDonald, that's not too bad. McDonald's pegged the gap to in front as well, to around a second. In the second that but the tyre's still warming. Operating range will again be that middle part of the race. As we know, there's a head of Marquez. Back up to second. This is great news for Rossi seeing no young protagonist to his crown of being the greatest rider of this century so far. Battling in behind. Particularly for Marquez, who's incredibly good on that Honda. You know, they're still learning at the top level. As Petrucci is the top Ducati in fifth. 1.2 seconds back. There's McDonald getting some search through maybe off the two, the pair in front. Oh, I'm breaking very deep into Marcus. What have he done, McDonald, as he rejoins in sixth? Ahead of Lorenzo and Zarco, but what have you done, McDonald, just as you're caught up to second and third you go down you idiot and that's now he's behind the battling Ducati pair of Dovi and Petrucci Medora's just broken up the Ducati party with Lorenzo in seventh as well oh he was going to be in sixth oh maybe Lorenzo is what is that move from Jorge has he got Crutchlow behind and now we've got Zarco we've got a train just not what McDonald needs if he wants to catch up to that podium pair. Now he's got a train of riders to battle with. Here with the multiple world champ, Lorenzo in sit. Well, he goes down the inside of Ducati in the first corner. Just about found a bike's width. Well, going to be very aggressive this race. We'll back up to sit though. Now he can concentrate and catch in his catty pair in front. Is this that Dovi starting to build a bit of a gap on Petrucci? It is. It's the second gap in front, half a second behind to Lorenzo. Moving now, there's a marker still battling for a second. Hopefully that slows them down enough for McDonald to catch up again. That's Rossi just easing away in the lead. Well, he's just managing his pace. He's not. He's built a gap and he's just keeping it, it looks like. It's Petrucci around the second in front. As there's Marquez back up to second ahead of Finales. What a battle that is. As we're halfway through this race. Well, McDonald ride again. Will that allow Lorenzo by? No, not this time. There's. Alex Rins down from 21st, one of the stars in the race in Qatar. Is... Lorenzo really wants that sip. We don't have none of it though. And a Wesley breaking going to spin ultimate corner, gone very wide. We have the inside line for the left. He's gone to the fifth lap. And if he wants to catch up to the pair in front, Lorenzo's harming this majorly by wanting the battle. Surely he realises that all, okay? He should drop back until they've caught up to Dovi and Petrucci. And then ignite the battle once again. For some reason, Lorenzo, for once, being ultra aggressive. He's got Petrucci 1.2 seconds in front. Lorenzo just three tenths behind. He could be in slipstream range. Just Volga down from 13th. 
He goes into the hairpin as Mark is back ahead of Vinod is for second. Has he got Sarko up to eighth ahead of Crutch though? And once again, it's around a second gap in front to Petrucci at this stage of the race, of this lap, should we say. And of this race, it's the same a lap ago. Now come at Donna, nail this left hand braking. So you've got Camber here to help you get in towards the apex. It should be simple. That was much better there. And a bit wide into the left hand end. What are you doing, Orge? Blocking McDonald on the exit. Fantastic battle from Orge, but this is not what Madonna needs when you can see Petrucci and Dovi right in front. Has he gone to the penultimate lap of the race? He's slipped into the 36s when he should be in the 35s. That's all because of one man at the moment. It's a hard tyre front and rear is definitely not work this race. But it's the only way you can have any kind of tyre left at the end of the race. It's, it's kind of stuck in a, between a rock and a hard place, McDonald. Because he's got no grip at all from these tyres. Bike's been sliding everywhere. And find it hard to get on the power, especially since that incident with Marquez and Vinales where he crashed by himself, really. Clipping the back of Marquez. Once again, look at that, trying to get on the power. Bike's not having any. Look at this bike sliding. Absolutely abysmal. And tries to brake into the right hander. He should be doing that easily, but no tyre. Even on hards. What is this place made of? Granite. Should be easily have some tyre left. And now look at that, he's trying to get on the power, he's struggling. He's way down on Lorenzo. He's probably lost sip now. And that's mainly thanks to Orge as well. And he's trying to gain on the top five and Orge just snuck his nose in all the time. And now he's under threat from Johan Zarko on the other tech three. And the other Yamahas. Unless he's got no rear tyre. He's also got Crutch though in tow. And all these title defence nooks and tatters for McDonald. No podiums in the first two races on the best bike in the field. Has he got Crutch though? Paul Saka. Will he try and make the move on McDonald as well? Not into the hairpin. Smod hits that apex, make sure he does as well. Once again, short shifting ever. And look at the rear end, just not liking this long left hand. You can see it rotating like a hell. As Crutcher tries to make the move into the right hander. Oh, it holds him off, but then Crutcher can just ease around the outside. Just look at this, he can't get the power down at all. Lindor next down the inside of Zarka though, for hate. What's at least the top 10 out of this? He goes through the left and the Zarko's by and look at this, here comes everyone. Oh, he's gone wide, he's down in the final corner. He's just going to get a single point from Argentina. Ridiculous, the tyre. And look at Pedrosa behind, shaking his head. What happened to Danny? As Rossi wins by over a second of the Marquez and Vinales with Dovi in fourth, Petrucci fifth, Lorenzo sips, Sarko in eighth behind Crutch, though, in the end. Levine only in ninth. And he's just spog around at the top ten of Scott Redding. Alvaro Batista with another fantastic race on that Aspo in 12th. Jack made a 13th. Lot of spaz on the Avinto with his first points of the season in 14th. And Patrick McDonald in 15th on the Yamaha. Is that time to right there with the top three, but Tyra once again got the best of him as Bradley Smith in 17th. The Danny Pedroza in last? 